Hey everybody, this is Rob and Jordan, and we are back once again for Archangel Inc. Live number 44 tonight. Jordan, how are you? I am great tonight, Rob. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy good. to happy to be back, happy to be on the live stream here and to chat a little bit about this evening's topic, which is going to be uh, how to increase sales for your audiobook. Um, any any opening thoughts, Jordan? I've got a couple of things in mind, but uh, leave the floor to you. Sure. I, I think opening thoughts for me, there's not as it doesn't seem to be as much out there for, uh, you know, at first glance for marketing an audiobook. A lot of what you'll find is sending people to your Amazon page or doing different things with print books, uh, you know, distributing your ebooks for free to people. There's a lot out there for those two things, but it doesn't seem like there's as much specifically out there for audiobooks. Uh, but there is a lot you can do. Uh, so we'll dispel that myth hopefully tonight and hopefully give some tips. Uh, but there is a lot you can do for audiobooks. Specifically, you should have to think about it different different because it's a different medium. So, mm -hmm. Yep, love it. Great uh, great points. I'll go through the couple of notes that I have here. Sure. So opening thoughts, um, audiobooks uh, meet a market need. And so the question tonight is how do we actively meet that audience? So uh, in terms of the market need, you know, there are a lot of people out there who who don't have time to read who have other activities. I mean, this is kind of my situation. There are other people, um, not everybody's in this situation, I guess, but, but a lot of people, you know, they, they have busy schedules and the only kind of leisure time or, or, uh, learning time that they have is going to be, you know, when they're, when they're exercising, um, when they're doing chores around their house, when they're commuting, um, when they're kind of actively doing other things, um, and not able to, to have a book in front of their eyes. And so um, yeah. there's there's a real opportunity to to meet that. One of the um, uh, one of the the issues I think that a lot of people experience, uh, and one of the areas of growth that is really helpful for audiobooks is commute time. Uh, and and I'll share a link to an article down below. Uh, it's really good. Uh, has a lot of information about kind of general audiobook trends, which which I'll touch on a couple of. But but one of the points was many countries that are that have longer commute times uh, on the whole seem to have um, corresponding increase in mm -hmm. audiobook uh, uh, traffic you know audiobook interest and so um, you know if you have a shorter commute time maybe you don't need you know something to, to occupy you for 40 minutes or an hour twice a day uh, whereas if you do uh, it's a really good opportunity to um, to get information to, to hear stories to edify yourself to be entertained all of those great things so um, the, the question again is, all right, uh, I'm sold. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a creator. I've decided to create an audiobook version. And like you mentioned, Jordan, what do we do with it? You know, there's, there's uh, advertising and marketing opportunities that are available for, you know, kind of uh, ebook editions and, and print editions. And we're a little bit more familiar with that and kind of what that looks like. But an audiobook edition is a little bit different. Uh, the, the pricing is going to be a little bit different. And you know, reaching people is going to be a little bit different. It's still a smaller market. And so you might have to think a little bit differently about how to actually reach that that audience. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a couple of ideas to share on that topic tonight. Yeah. Good deal. Good All stuff. right. Yeah. So big question, why focus on audiobooks? And I will go over a couple of these notes here. Uh, audiobooks are still growing in popularity year over year. So um, one of the projections actually in this article, which uh, again, I think is already down in the notes, but if not, we'll include it there, is that um, it's the the market share that seems to be growing in terms of audiobooks seems to be coming not from print books. People are, are still kind of committed to the print versions, people who are print readers, but from uh, from ebooks, you know, the and, and you can see in some cases why that would be. Again, you know, people have limited free time. But um, it has the sa some of the same benefits as well. You can you can have many different audiobooks on a single device at once. Uh, you can download it instantly, and um, you can make it available on kind of multiple platforms. Um, and 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 it's easy to, to commute with. You don't have to carry around you know a big textbook or or even you know several um, paper uh, paperback editions with you. And uh, so audiobooks are still growing in popularity each year. One of the one of the projections that uh, that this article suggested is that actually by 2023, uh, total revenue might be higher for audiobooks than than digital or than uh, ebook editions. Which wow, uh, wow, yeah, which is which is crazy. You know, I mean, historically, <laughs> um, in the last several years, we found that that um, 
print is is kind of seeing a little bit of a resurgence, but on the aggregate, people see more of their sales through ebook editions. And it might be the case that in several years coming up, um, that is that is reversed. And if you don't have an audiobook, if most people are making more uh, making more money on audiobook editions, then you might be left out of that opportunity. Uh, any thoughts on on those, Jordan? Uh, no, not on that first one. Nope. I, okay. I, I love it. I totally, totally agree. And I, I can see that, you know, from what I hear of people and from what I see the stats, I mean, I think they're only going to go only going to grow. The only thing I'll add there is I think, mm -hmm. I think it just make, it makes sense. It makes intuitive sense because if you're thinking people really want to find the things that help maximize their time. Right. And, you know, if you're just driving or just walking, uh, doing those things you can do, uh, or if you're just cleaning or cooking, you can do a lot of those things. Uh, while listening to an audiobook, and more and more of us have the you know Google Homes or Alexas that we could just say, mm -hmm. "Hey, play audiobook," right. and we can be doing those things. I mean, listening to music and, and cooking in silence can be good too, but we can balance that a little more and make even better use of our time with audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it. And that, that was another thing that they mentioned, the, the rise of smart speakers and some of this smart technology yeah. uh, can, um, uh, it does seem to be leading to uh, an increase in interest and um, uh, and revenue for, for the audiobook market. Uh, mm -hmm. So a couple of other notes here. Uh, this applies more if you are narrating yourself, but an audiobook allows you a little bit more of a personal connection with, uh, with your audience. So if you're self-publishing uh, and you have the, have the ability to self-produce your own audiobook, uh, then uh, it allows you to get to know your audience a little bit more. They can begin to know, like, and trust you more. They get to hear your voice. They get to hear the intonation of, of how you share your story. And uh, it, it can be a way to deepen that uh, that interest and that connection uh, in a positive way and, and bring more of those super fans to you. Um, and then uh, it allows, this is kind of something we went over, allows you to reach a group of people who don't like to quote unquote read. So <laughs> they might still love to learn. They might still love to hear stories and, and gather information um, and edify themselves. But again, they don't uh, feel as comfortable with the, the print medium or, um, you know, the visual medium for, for any, for either reason. Yeah. I think you're just reaching a different set of people. And especially if you already think about it, if you already have it, if you happen to be running your own podcast, think about how much sense that makes. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm running a podcast. Maybe I want to write a book on the side. Yeah, you're gonna do your own audiobook as well because people are used to hearing from you. It's the same thing with the whole. A lot of I've read a lot of people say, "Hey, this is the reason to start a podcast." For the same mm -hmm. reason you just mentioned, because of that connection, they get to hear your voice. Uh, it's a good reason again to do video and those things because people, you know, people can read from you and that's great, and you can write blogs and all those things. But I think seeing you in person or hearing your voice really just deepens that connection in, in a different way. Yep. Yeah, I agree. What, what do they say? Something like, you know, 90% of communication is nonverbal and, you know, you lose basically all of that when, when you are in a, uh, uh, a written medium, um, mm -hmm. you gain a little bit more of that in an audio medium, a little bit more still in a video, you know, an audio medium, you know, most, uh, all of it, if you're in person, but, um, uh, but it just allows for that, that deeper level of, um, relationship to, uh, to develop. So I think that's yeah. really, a uh, good reason to look into audiobook uh, creation. All right, so moving on, we have how to market audiobooks. And uh, the way I've broken this down is kind of general, a big picture, which we'll get to last, uh, and then ACX exclusive, and then ACX non-exclusive. There are certain limitations that are imposed if you have elected to go exclusive with Audiobook Creation Exchange, that's ACX. And uh, so we'll talk a couple of, of strategies that kind of work in that situation. Uh, and then some that work outside of that situation and uh, and then some other general things to keep in mind. Um, let's see, so ACX exclusive. Uh, first thing here, giveaway promo codes, for example, audiobook boom. So this is a pretty cool uh, program and and website. Jordan, what what do you know about them? Yeah, I've used them before. Uh, it, it's really good. It, it, it helps to get the word out on your audiobook. They have a list of people that um, you know, sign up for books for free in, in, you know, in exchange for hopefully for review. Again, as we know from Amazon, you can't do it, uh, you know, and, and guarantee a review. They can't say, Hey, we're going to send this to 10 people and they have to review your book or we'll never mm -hmm. give them another free book. They mentioned that from the beginning, Hey, this, right. we're just going to send your book. And if they like it, they'll do a review. But the service really is just getting your book out to interested audiobook listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something else to add to what you do. I've used them before. It's good. You know, you do have to uh, connect with the people, 
send them codes, follow up with them. So that's why I like them because I prefer to do all of that connection and follow up myself uh, because I feel like the uh, return on that is better. Mm -hmm. There are some websites out there probably for audiobooks, but I know there are some for uh, ebooks and print books that, you know, they, they do their own kind of follow up and marketing for you as part of the right. package. We mentioned that before, I believe in our book review video. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. That's all fine and dandy, but you're going to find the best results when you're doing it in, in a personal way. So yeah. I'm a big fan of audiobook boom and anything like that, because, hey, they, they just say here, here, here's a spreadsheet. Here's a contact. You know, the onus is on you to go and, and send them uh, that stuff. But it is a, it is a really good service as far as if you have promo codes to give away, it's definitely valuable. Yeah, and and for those who are not as familiar with ACX, if you do publish exclusively, they allow you, I believe it's uh, 25 uh, promotional codes for for the US market and then up to 25 others for the UK market. So it's- yeah, it's, it's 25, Rob, and mm -hmm. uh, it's one from what I've heard, and I've done this myself before too, You know, if you run all, out of all those 25, you can email them and I, I believe they'll give you more. That may be the old way uh, they mm -hmm. used to do it, but I, from what I still hear, they're very uh, they're very good at responding to you and helping you out. They want to help help you spread the word uh, in your audiobook. Yep. And if you're using all the codes, just just ask and see what they say. So I yep. just wanted to add that it's not a it's not like a hard cap. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that that first level. And then if you need more, I think I think there's an opening to get more. That's awesome. And, and one of the reasons that this is uh, thank you thank you for sharing that, Jordan. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons that this is really nice is. Um, Anybody who's who's published an audiobook versus a, a, a ebook or or a print edition will find that it is generally a lot harder to get audiobook reviews. So if there are things that you can actively do to generate those reviews, generate those ratings on on Audible.com, uh, that can be a really big boost uh, because again, each one matters more. If the typical uh, listing only has let's say two or three or five or fewer <laughs> reviews, and you can get two or three reviews out of that, then then you're already catapulting yourself into the, the upper echelon of um, listings there yeah. versus a uh, the general Amazon site, you know, typical book may have, you know, a dozen, two dozen, you know, five, 10, whatever more. And so working for that, that individual review may not have quite as much of a, as of a proportional impact. So um, it can be really, really helpful. And you think, well, man, I, I want to make money off this, right? I'm, I, why am I giving it away? But, uh, but the, hope and the anticipation is for the downstream effect of what happens when people actually find that that you have positive reviews, that people enjoy the story, that they enjoy the performance and so forth. And uh, it just enhances that conversion rate for you uh, in many cases. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And so next thing here, share sample excerpt. Uh, beware of ACX exclusivity rules. So uh, what that means is you are allowed, if you are publishing exclusively on ACX, you, you can have a uh, commercial sample of up to five minutes in length, and you can make that available. You can put that on your YouTube page. You can put that on your website. You can put that on your podcast, you know, on every episode of your podcast, if you wanted. Uh, you can make that sample available because ideally that sample is going to get people interested in the book. You know, when, when you're crafting that sample, generally we recommend an excerpt that sounds really good, you know, uh, in terms of production and, uh, and then maybe has some, some point of interest. Is there a teaser that you can end on that makes people think, man, what, what, what else is, is going to come next? I want to know more. <laughs> or, you know, is there some sort of virtuoso, uh, performance. Maybe you have your narrator have two or three different characters uh, with with kind of fun vocalization, or or they're pretending to, I don't know, make all sorts of sound effects or something like that. Um, something that's going to to engage your audience. And that sample you're allowed to distribute basically wherever you want without without concern that you're going to uh, disrupt your your exclusivity arrangement. Because as far as Audi uh, Audible is concerned, as far as ACX is concerned, you're just helping to promote their title. Um, however, I will mention that when it comes to their exclusivity rules, um, you are allowed to use that sample of up to five minutes or up to 10%. So sometimes 10% mm. uh, of your, your total run length. Um, and I will include a link down below to the ACX uh, rules uh, around that in particular, but um, it is something to be mindful of. You can't necessarily just uh, pick up excerpts willy nilly and make them available on your social media pages, um, on your website and so forth, because as far as ACX is concerned, that's going to be considered uh, not 
the, the title is not available exclusively there because if somebody can listen to chapter two on your Facebook page and chapter three on your YouTube channel and chapter four on your website and so forth, then then why are they going to uh, yeah. buy it from ACX? So they're, they're interested in preserving that exclusivity. So just be mindful of what that is. And again, that uh, link to the, the recommendations and the, uh, the rules around that uh, I will include down below. Um, anything else about sharing that, that sample excerpt, Jordan? Nope. All right. You're good. Good, good deal. Uh, so another idea is to create audiobook bundles. So I know um, you've you've explored this a little bit. We've talked mm -hmm. about this a little bit. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on on bundles? How does that work? I think bundles work especially well if you are going for you are going into ACX because um, you can't as far yeah you can't set your own pricing. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about value in terms of the Audible credit, if they're buying it off Audible. Uh, bundles are really good because, hey, if you put two of your books together, uh, a customer can get your books for one credit. Uh, and that's a really good value for them because they're only spending one credit mm -hmm. or, you know, and it's a really good value for you because you're getting whatever the end, whatever the price is off of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really difficult thing when it comes to ACX is pricing and book length and trying to figure out what, what works for that because, right. because of the way the model is set up. Hey, I don't know if I want to spend a credit on a book that maybe is eight or nine dollars, because to me a credit is maybe worth eleven to fifteen, depending on depending mm -hmm. on the package. Uh, maybe I'm just going to rather buy that. But then, hey, I don't really want to buy that. I would rather find a book that I can spend a credit on. So there's some interesting uh, marketing mm -hmm. questions there. But yeah, as far as longer books and bundles go, they're extremely valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, I've had I've had yeah, good luck with that putting those together. Yeah, uh, the other the other advantage potentially to bundles is uh, when it comes to ACX bounties and mm. um, and bounties are, I believe they they changed the terms you know in the last couple of years they yeah. kind of changed frequently but um, but bounties are when somebody signs up to be an Audible member uh, to have a, a recurring subscription and elects to use one of their uh, I believe their first you know bount or their first uh, credit. On one of your titles because basically as far as acx is concerned you know you brought that person onto the platform so you get a bonus uh to make that available so if you can do that if you have several titles out and you can have a bundle that's going to be you know let's say um three three titles in one or four titles in one or something like that and they think okay yeah this is this is definitely worth it i am i'm mm -hmm. interested this is the highest value option i have then not only do you earn whatever royalties uh, accrued for that but you also earn that that bounty uh, which can be significant. I, it was fifty dollars, I believe, per per bounty, um, but um, but it may have may have changed. So uh, I'll include a link down below to the bounty information program. But that's another advantage. It just is an incentive, like you said, Jordan. Uh, some interesting marketing, you know, uh, tactics and, and strategies can be involved in in utilizing those bundles. Yeah, absolutely. Good deal. Uh, so let's see. Another one here, create snippets of your book and share these for free. So we talked about this a little bit in terms of that sample, but but you can also kind of repurpose these. Um, you know, one, one example would be to um, create some sort, and we'll cover some of this later, but, you mm -hmm. know, create some sort of uh, video or animation to go along with that sample, something just to add a little bit of interest mm -hmm. and, and make it more more shareable, put it up on social media, um, you know, on on Instagram or, or elsewhere, um, have something that that draws people in a little bit and, um, you know, kind of reach people that way. Again, you, the goal is to have a sample that is going to be um, kind of uh, interesting uh, from, from a, a listening standpoint and, and engaging and, and kind of draw your your listener, your reader in and uh, make them uh, curious enough that they want to click through and, and maybe uh, purchase the audiobook. Yep, I can say, Rob, some of these things have got me excited when I was doing some of the research <laughs> for this live and even just hearing you talk about this stuff. I'm yep. like, man, this is stuff I need to do. I need to do more right. of my own uh, audiobook marketing. But yeah, because I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, that, that myth of hey, there's not as much I can do for audiobooks. Then you start thinking about it and researching it. Oh, wow, there's, <laughs> there's so many things that people are doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's super exciting to me. Maybe as you're watching this, it's exciting to you too, just to think about uh, audiobooks. But I love it. I mean, I know I personally love audiobooks. <laughs> They're probably maybe not my uh, 
preference or book of choice, but there are uh, right among them if I'm walking or doing other things. So right. I think this is a, a great strategy for authors. I'm glad we're talking about this. Cool, right on. Uh, so let's move on to ACX non-exclusive and I'll I'll just cover the, the handful of things that I mentioned here. Uh, one, offer a sample chapter on YouTube, Facebook, podcasts, et cetera, uh, especially if it's more than that, that 10% uh, or five minutes allotted already in your retail sample. Um, you can repurpose your content as a slideshow, as an animation, as a presentation, um, all sorts of different things if you're not bound by ACX's exclusivity arrangements to get people interested in the audio version or you know create other value added products uh, that are that come from that that source audio file and uh, let's see then um, bookbub okay. bookbub chirp was another one that was oh yeah there. I, uh, I overlooked that. Thank you. Uh, and so book, book, bub, chirp. So, uh, Jordan thoughts on any of these, including chirp, uh, which I know that you have a little, um, uh, learned about a little bit more than I have. Yeah. Chirp is uh, for my, for my experience, it's brand new. Now my mm -hmm. books are exclusive with ACX, so I haven't gone with them. And again, that's why I mentioned, Hey, like let's, let, I'm, I'm going to start thinking about this and doing this more mm -hmm. on my own, but yeah, book bub is, uh, if you don't know about book bub, uh, it's one of the biggest websites out there that will, uh, you know, if you get a BookBub deal, as it's called, they'll send your book out uh, in uh, one of their emails to their list of, I think last I read it was about a million. Uh, maybe it's at that point still. Mm -hmm. They have a million readers that are interested in books. Now, I don't know how big BookBub Chirp is, uh, but I know they just started it, so I'm sure they have some energy behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably, you know, like I said, I didn't, I, I didn't look into it too much because I haven't personally dealt with it myself, but I'm guessing it's a similar structure where you submit your book, uh, you mm -hmm. submit your audio book, and then it goes through their platform. And that, yeah, if you can get a deal with them, uh, I'm sure it would be valuable, but that's just another option, something to look look at and you know something to, uh, again, to weigh, hey, do I wanna go exclusive or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a potential option with them. Right, yeah, they, they generally have a very highly curated list of very warm leads. If you are able mm -hmm. to land a BookBub deal, even though you're typically dropping your price down significantly from what your regular retail price is, um, in many cases you make it up in, in the sales, uh, even on that, that same day of the promotion, but if not because of the boost, because of the increased visibility, uh, that that the the uh, promotion can afford, um, you can make more full price sales. You know, once the uh, once the price changes, so uh, they're they're a cool company and um, and one of the very uh, effective promotional platforms mm -hmm. that are that are out there still because um, it can be hard. You know, there are a lot of promotional platforms and people can get a little bit fatigued, but because of their their reputation and how highly curated they are, uh, it seems to still work pretty well. And um, and this is their their answer to. You know the audiobook question and, and making things available at a reduced rate for for their leads and um, generating hopefully a lot more interest and buzz and you know um, full price sales uh, subsequent to it. Yep, good deal. Uh, and then let's see. So we we covered those repurposing and uh, offer a sample chapter. So one other thought on you know a sample chapter on YouTube or podcast or Facebook, you know, when you, when you make these available, you can also provide some commentary for yourself, especially yeah. if it's your own information, you know, you can, you can have that, uh, section excerpted and then, and then talk about it, answer questions, you know, create uh, live content around it. Um, you know, have, have an opportunity to uh, provide case studies, you know, all sorts of different things that, um, can enhance people's uh, interest in that topic and say, Hey, I want the, I want the full, the full deal. You know, I want, um, the, the comprehensive put together audiobook um, because all of these things that you're explaining based on it sounds really good. So, so give me the distilled version and yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So moving yeah, on. I was just going to add Rob, I think any, again, anytime you can repurpose content, that's why I like, I like the idea of, of the non-exclusive. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you obviously you do get benefits. So it's something to look into whether you want to go, uh, either way, hey, if you want us to do a video on that and do even more research about uh, the differences there, I think we could certainly do that. Uh, but yeah, just be think like I think about thinking about repurposing content just in general is just huge because again, mm -hmm. like we we talked about writer's block either either last right. week or the week before or recently, mm -hmm. and you know just the idea of hey, you know you don't have to start from scratch, especially right. especially if you already have a book out there. Mm -hmm. There's content in there that you can repurpose, put elsewhere. Like I love the idea, put it on a slide so animation or do like a, or do some kind of video for your sample. Never thought about that either. So mm -hmm. there's tons of ideas of how to repurpose and just, right. you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to start from scratch. If you have a, a good, a good book and good content, take a chapter. Hey, what am I talking about in there? Make a short video on it or, or mm -hmm. something like that. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tons of tons of opportunities for repurposing. Yeah. Because again, if your content is um, is good quality and you stand behind it, then then the question is, okay, how can I reach people wherever they're at already? You know, the people who would who would be interested in the information that I'm sharing and the stories that I'm sharing uh, that aren't necessarily on the the initial platform or initial medium that I created in. How can I reach them in in their world? How can I you know um, sort of uh, evangelize to, you know, to the audio <laughs> people, to, um, you know, to the people who are on YouTube, who are, who are on medium and, and all these other places, even if they're not on your, your own website. So, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the vision behind it. And it gives you an opportunity to, um, to kind of tweak things, to evolve things and, uh, and hopefully, you know, bring more people into the fold for you. Yep. All right. So moving on, we've got general audiobook marketing tips and I'll kind of, uh, run through these as well. Um, First one, audio sells audio. Think like an audio consumer. We'll get into that. Um, appear on podcasts, radio shows, et cetera. Um, reach out to audiobook bloggers specifically. Um, consider making a special deal for any audience that you present to. And uh, make sure, this might seem uh, straightforward, but uh, share your audiobook link specifically. Sometimes people will just send their, their general Amazon page over. Uh, and uh, if you want to promote the audiobook, then maybe send them over to the audiobook link specifically. Uh, so thoughts on on any of those as we kind of start yeah. summarize, Jordan? Yeah, a few thoughts. I think uh, I think the overall general theme is again, you can market your audiobook, mm -hmm. and the idea is to get your head uh, get you put your head in the space of where your customers right. uh, are at. Hey, where 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 are people going to be that are listening to my audiobook specifically? Thinking about yeah. that, like audiobook bloggers. Right. Or making making you know maybe even making your blogs into audio content and then attracting mm -hmm. those people and say hey if you want more of this I do have an audiobook with this content that you can listen to yep. you know blah 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 while you're doing this mm -hmm. uh, another note there that I think again you you shared that the share your audiobook link specifically uh, mm -hmm. I, again maybe that's a no brainer but thinking about that when you're uh, sending out reviews uh, review mm -hmm. requests if right. someone says hey do you have an audiobook. Or maybe even putting it in your list of formats that you're willing to send out. Hey, I actually have an audiobook coming out. Maybe maybe it's not going to time exactly with your launch, mm -hmm. but you can always mention that. Hey, if you if you're an audiobook person, you know I would be happy to send you you know a free code, uh, mm -hmm. or even if it was just a couple chapters. If if right. you were uh, um, non-exclusive and could send those out to people, right? Uh, yeah, like you said, it, it's hard to get audible reviews for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It's even it's even more uh, scarce <laughs> than it's uh, you know scare, it's very scarce. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you can send that out and send that link specifically, uh, hey, you listen to the audiobook version, please go and leave a review on Audible or wherever uh, you know you're hosting your book. Right. Yep. Yeah. And and this uh, this line that you shared here um, that we have on the screen, yeah. uh, audio sells audio. Uh, I heard that from Joanna Penn, and we do have a, a further resource a link yep. to. Uh, a post of hers that uh, is really good. She's got an associated video as well, and you can check that out. But um, but that's the idea, you know. As you mentioned, Jordan, what what are audio consuming people doing already? Where are they Where are they going? What are they following? What sort of um, practices and habits do they have? And and how can you reach out to them? How can you reach them where they're at? And um, you know, make things available uh, that are easy that are going to not ask them to to engage in, in habits that they're not already doing and, and jump through any particular hoops. Um, you know, just again, think about that. If you, if you listen to audio books or podcasts yourself, how do you find things, you know, mm -hmm. what, what sort of, um, habits do you have and, and how can you make yourself available to, to people who might love what you're, what you're creating? So really good. Yeah. Stuff. I think especially with that, if you're going to appear on podcasts again, if you're, mm -hmm. or if you're going to have your own, uh, just think about that. Think about, you know, you can uh, send a link to your book or talk about your book uh, in general on guest podcasts, or your own mm -hmm. podcasts. But hey, people are already listening to you. Mm -hmm. uh, don't maybe not even mention your book. Maybe just be like, hey, you know, listen, you can go purchase the audiobook uh, edition here because that's mm -hmm. probably what you like. Now, certainly those people, you know, if, if people are listening to your podcast but want a book to read on the side, they're going to grab your print book or whatever. You know, they're going to have that option, hopefully. Right, uh, but think about you know the it's gonna probably it's gonna sound more appealing if you're on a podcast. Hey, I actually just recently released a book on mm -hmm. whatever subject too, and you know you get to listen to me a little more if you enjoyed this. <laughs> right, right, yeah, no, great, uh, great stuff, and um, we can move on now to yep. further resources. Uh, again, this is just a, a nice guest post or um, 
or not a guest post, but a, a post on Joanna Penn's uh, website, Book Marketing, 60 Ways to Market Your Audiobook. Link will be down below. But she has a number of other ideas, I think, that are that are really cool. Things like um, including a QR code or mm. creating a, a short link that has a list um, in a single URL to all the different platforms that you have available, you know, whether digital or print or audio, because sometimes that can be an issue. You know, you don't want to send somebody a, a, an Amazon or three different Amazon links to say, Hey, my ebook is here. And my, you know, print book is here and my digital book is, or my audio book is there. Um, having something that's kind of consolidated and lets people click through and select where and, and how they want to purchase it um, can be really helpful. So she's got a number of uh, really good tips along those lines, uh, as well as a number of other suggestions that kind of uh, mimic the, the things that we mentioned here, like audio sales, audio, mm -hmm. and, and think about things in that way. Uh, anything else that you wanted to, uh, to share on that? Jordan. Nope. Nope. Not on that. All right. Cool. Well, good deal. Um, closing thoughts. So uh, there are lots of lots of different ways to uh, reach your audiobook listeners and and those are increasing. So uh, again, the, the big takeaway for, for us is um, it does require a little bit of, of lateral thinking. It's going to be perhaps a little bit unfamiliar and a little bit different than uh, the digital or the print editions that you might already be familiar with and, and working on. But uh, there are ways to target that that market specifically, and uh, and hopefully these are a few uh, a few breadcrumb trails to uh, to kind of um, start learning around. Uh, anything else, Jordan? No, I just think it's important to remember as you're trying different things, figure out what works best for you and your audience and your genre, uh, mm -hmm. your book, and all of those things. You know, hey, if you give some of these a try and you're like, ah, this isn't this isn't this isn't necessarily working. You know, I was having more success with spending time. Uh, blogging or spending time doing other things. Certainly just, you know, do what works for you uh, and especially maybe something that you like to do and all of that. But I think it's always worth trying out these new things because you never know, you might hit a chord. Wow, this is actually way well worth my time. Mm -hmm. I can appear on a podcast and, you know, sell 50 books. Like that's fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. you know, let's keep them coming. Right. Uh, and that, that could be the option. You don't know that for sure. I don't think unless you go and try it. Right. Yep. In general, we're a big fan of experimentation. Mm -hmm. Try a bunch of different things. See what works. You know. See where your energy is best uh, suited to uh, to apply and, and continue to apply. But uh, but don't discount things before you you give them an opportunity. So if there's something that that speaks to you or appeals to you, it's like yeah, maybe I could do that. Um, consider giving it a try, especially if you're not getting the sorts of uh, sales and results that you are hoping for. Then then some of these other things may uh, may be able to open the field up a little bit for you. Yep, absolutely. Good stuff. All right. Excellent. Well, folks, thanks for checking things out. If you have any questions, comments, uh, we'd love to hear from you. H how do you market your audiobook? Have you found anything that works really well? Uh, are there pain points? Are there struggles? Are there things that we went over today that you think, oh yeah, maybe that could work or, oh, that would never work for me. You know, we'd, we'd be happy to hear um, any thoughts, any reflections on, on that, as well as other general self-publishing questions. And appreciate you tuning in, like, uh, subscribe, you know, all of that, all that good stuff. And we will see you folks next time.